just honor the Lord on this evening, giving God all the praise, giving him all the glory because he's worthy to be praised. So let us say, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all what he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Amen. We just thank God for the opportunity to be on social media to bring forth the word of God. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If we ever need the word, we need the word of God in these times which we live now. We need the word of God. So we just grateful for those that tune it in uh, this evening. I mean, we have a topic we're going to deal with. So if you get your Bibles, we got verses that we'll be reading. Amen. If you get your Bible, verses we'll be reading. Amen. I love to give people the word of God. Give them book, chapter, and verse for they can read it for themselves. Amen. For they can read it for themselves. Because the Bible says study his word. Study God's word to show yourself approval unto God. A work would need not be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. We have to study the word of God for ourselves. And uh, if we don't have uh, wisdom of understanding of his word, I believe it's in the book of James, if any man, any man lack wisdom, uh, let him ask of God. So we have to pray and seek God, and God will uh, reveal his word to us. Amen. He will reveal his word to us to us. Amen. So once again, we just thank God for the opportunity to be on tonight. And the topic is tonight, if you got your Bibles, what does the Bible say about secrets? What does it say about secrets? You know, people keeping secrets. Amen. And I looked up the word secret. It says something kept hidden or unexplained uh, mystery. Something kept from the knowledge of others or shared only confidentially with a few. Amen. Private. People be said, hush, hush, keep quiet. And so we're going to see what the Bible say about secrets. A secret can be difficult to keep and equally difficult to share. Hmm? Amen. So, uh, use for the example, people like, well, can you keep a secret? Uh, We're going to have a, a birthday celebration for a person, you know, for someone. Uh, We're going to have a, uh, some get together. We don't want the individual who we have it for to know what's going on. So, can you keep a secret? And some people can keep a secret, and some people can't keep a secret. And so, uh, the Bible it says the Bible teaches indirectly that keeping secrets can be either good or bad. Amen. It doesn't does not uh, clearly uh, expresses uh, the right and or wrong use or the usage of secrets. So as we go into the word of God, uh, I'm reminded uh, in the scripture, uh, if you know anything about Samson, I think it's in the book of Judges, the, the 16th chapter, the fourth verse through the 22nd verse, but it talks about uh, the story of Samson and Delilah, excuse me, Samson and Delilah. And we know that uh, that Samson, amen, when he was born, amen, it was the Nazarite vow, amen, that uh, number one, he wasn't supposed to uh, drink any strong wine, and, you know, drink any wine, amen, any strong drink. Uh, two, he wasn't supposed to uh, touch anything that was dead. Uh, this was the Nazarite vow. And the third was no razor will come upon his head. And so as we begin to read the Bible and talk about Samson and Delilah, it said Samson revealed the source of his strength. Yeah, Samson revealed the source of his strength and act 
uh, which based on the aftermath of his uh, admission was awfully stupid. <laughs> was awfully stupid. Uh, it was a secret he should have kept. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes when you tell people your secrets, amen, your innermost thoughts, sometimes people will use it against you. Amen. And once Delilah found out where Samson's strength lies because the Philistines paid her, amen, she didn't have no interest in Samson. The only thing, she wanted to find out where his strength lies. She found out the secret <clears throat> of his strength, and that was the cutting of his hair. So we, the topic tonight is talking about what does the Bible say about secrets? And so I went into the book of Esther, <clears throat> uh, the book that bears her name. Esther, the story provides a positive example of someone keeping a secret. And we look at uh, Esther, Queen Esther, decision to hide her nationality. What you talking about, preacher? Well, we know that she was a Jew. She was Jewish. Amen. If you look at Esther 2 and 10, it said Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred. For Mordecai or Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it, shouldn't reveal what her nationality was. And I believe if you stay in Esther and go to Esther, uh, the second chapter, the 20th verse, it reiterates what I just got through reading. Amen. And so, therefore, keep that under wraps. Keep that a secret. Why? Because there was a man by the name of Haman. Amen. Every time the Jews, uh, amen, every time he walked by, he wanted them to bow down to him. And Mordecai did not bow down. And we know what the, the scriptures say. We, uh, Mordecai is not the only one. If we read in the book of Daniel about the three Hebrew young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, amen, I believe Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to bow down to the golden image or the golden image or the, the, the statue that, uh, that he had built of himself. And when they heard the music, they were supposed to bow, but they refused to bow down. Amen. Because I believe the book of Exodus tells us that thou shalt not uh, bow down and you shouldn't have no other God before me. This is what God was saying. And so they had their allegiance to God. They wasn't going to bow down to man. And Haman got upset with Mordecai because he didn't bow down. Mm-hmm. Amen. And because of that, he was very upset. Amen. That he wanted to, uh, he was fear, and he was, <laughs> he was infuriated. He was upset and he wanted to annihilate all the Jews. Mm-hmm. That's what he wanted to do. And so we see Esther, amen. She plays an instrumental part of God's plan to save his people. Yeah, God used Esther. Uh huh. We'll look at Esther 4 and 13 said, Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not uh, with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. So, in other words, amen. If they pass this decree about annihilate all the Jews, don't think you're going to be spared because you are a Jew. And I think she said, if I perish, you let me perish. If you read the book of Esther, it's a good book, amen, a good story about Esther, amen. And I, I believe Esther, amen, and Mordecai, they was cousins, and uh, Mordecai raised her as his daughter. But as we get into the scripture, even more so, it say the same story also supports the morality of revealing a secret that, if kept hidden, will cause great wrong or serious harm. And so, uh, if you still in Esther 2, the second chapter, get down to the 21, 23rd verse, I think it was two chamberlains, 
uh, wanted to lay hands on the king, and I believe Mordecai overheard uh, what they wanted to do, and so he went and told Esther because Esther was in a place of position now because she is the queen, amen, and then she told it to her husband, which was the king, and I believe those two fellows was hung, amen, praise the name of the Lord. So as we continue to get into what does the Bible say about secrets, it's a proverb, the central book among the, uh, the wisdom literature of the Bible is the most explicit about uh, keeping secrets, uh, chapter 11. If you look at chapter 11, uh, chapter 11 says that a man of understanding holds his tongue. A man of understanding holds his tongue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. you got a whole lot of people can't hold their tongue. Amen. And, and that's why I never understood if you know a person is a gossiper. Amen. They gossip. They, they gossip all the time. Why would you go to them in confidence and talk about your business? Amen. And I found out that folks who gossip about other folks' business, I, I'm not going to get no witnesses here, but they talk about other folks' business to you. What make you think when you leave that they're not going to talk about your business? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, amen. What make you think they're not going to talk about your business? Uh-huh. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, so, so when we look in the scripture, amen, praise God. And talking about Proverbs, it say, praise God, a man of understanding holds his tongue. Yeah, he holds his tongue. Now, uh, now I like what we had in Sunday school yesterday morning, amen, the scripture. Amen. That we had uh, in, the, and I believe if every saint, Amen, not only a saint but people out in the world, if they follow, Amen, this uh, example, I believe it was John three, John three and eleven. Saint John. Some people say Saint John three and eleven. It says, "Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know." You only, amen. If we follow these, the, this principle, we only talk about things that we know. We can't go on what we heard. Uh, I thought, honey, I heard that, baby, I heard that. Well, you, you just don't know. We speak that we know and testify that we have seen. <laughs> uh huh. And ye receive not our witness. So you testify or you speak on things you know, speak things you don't know. In other words, that's what I'm getting. You don't speak on stuff you don't know. But then you gossiping. Then that's when people start assuming things. Well, I, I think it's this. I think it's that. And when you don't know, you're like, oh, I just don't know. Uh, and you know what? People who love to gossip and stir up mess, mm -hmm, you run them off when you say, well, I don't know nothing about that. I don't know. I don't know nothing. I, I, the subject you're talking about, I don't know nothing about that. But we're going to get back into the scripture. Praise God. Proverbs 11 chapter, you read all that, says that a man of understanding holds his tongue. Amen. What you saying? You can't speak on everything. Can't speak on everything. A gossip. Yeah, gossip. Mm -hmm. Betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy man keeps a secret. And so what you saying? Well, I believe Proverbs 11, chapter 12, verse that he that is void of wisdom, void of wisdom, uh, despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. Now, listen to the 13th verse says, a, uh, <laughs> a tail barrier, mm, a tail barrier, reveal its secrets. But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. He keeps it to himself. So what it is saying that when people come to you and they say, I want to talk to you, I just want to keep this between you and I. 
you know, that's something, you know, that uh, people have confidence in you that they can't confide in you because to say that people, you can't confide in everybody. And sometimes you can't even confide uh, with people in the church. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't, can't confide in them. But a but a but a, 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 a tale barrier, amen. Some people say tattle tale or a tell going to reveal secrets. Mm -hmm. They're going to reveal secrets. But he that is a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. So keeping a secret can be noble. I remember when I was working a long time ago, a saint came up to me and, and said. Uh, uh, preach, I need to talk to you. This is going to be between you and I. See, I haven't talked to my pastor. This is between you and I. And whatever the conversation was, it didn't go no further than her and I, what we were talking about. And I, I don't probably forgot what it was now. But she had confidence in me uh, that I wouldn't say anything. Amen, amen. And I thought that was something that she entrusted her secret with me. Mm-hmm. Amen. Praise God. Like I said, you can't confide in Amen. That's a bad thing when you have preachers messy. When you have preachers, Amen. Praise God. Amen. Reveal folks' secret. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. They have confidence. They talk to you. Amen. But secrets kept for the wrong reason mm -hmm, earn a person the title of wicked. For a wicked man accepts a bribe in secret to pervert the course of justice. What you talking about? Just got through reading that. A wicked person or a wicked man taking a bribe out of the bosom to pervert, pervert the ways of justice. Mm-hmm. Amen. Slides you a couple of dollars. And that's the biggest problem in society today, amen, even politicians, amen, amen, even in the church, amen, some politics have crept into the church, amen, and sometimes you don't hear from folks unless they want you to vote for them and cause a whole lot of friction in the church, and God said he's not the author of confusion, mm-hmm. He ain't the author of confusion, amen. Some people get all bent up out of shape, amen, if they run for something, praise God, amen, do some underhanded stuff just for a position, amen. Pastor Henderson going to try to stay on this, what the Bible said about secrets, but it, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. And it says also, I believe, when we look in the scripture, amen, it talks about, amen, whoso slanders, his neighbor in secret, amen, him will I put to silence. I believe the 101 division of Psalms in the fifth verse, amen, in secret, amen, praise God, amen, in secret. It's a terrible thing, amen, praise God. It's a terrible thing when folks keep secrets, amen, from one another, amen. I know some people get in relationships, amen, Amen. Praise God. Amen. A husband and wife. Amen. <laughs> amen. And the secret is she don't want to have no children. Why? Because she may have, amen, uh, has some, uh, you know, some, some surgeries and things. Amen. That she's not able to produce any children. But don't she keep that secret because why? She may want to be with that man may want, you know, for him to be the husband and stuff like that. Amen. Praise God. That caused a problem. Amen. Vice versa with men. Amen. They may have had a vasectomy or something that they can't have no children. And this woman, amen, want to bear children and know he can't do that. Shouldn't keep no secrets. And that's going to blow up the marriage if you get together. Because somewhere down the line, we're going to want to know why we ain't pregnant. <laughs> Why we ain't having no children, amen, because of secret. And I believe if you go into a marriage or religion, you need to come off right off the bat. Well, I can't have no children because of this, and I can't do this, or the man the same way, don't hold no secret. And then you get that person the opportunity to accept it or move on, amen, move on. So don't keep no secrets. Put everything out in the open, amen. I know sometimes it's difficult, 
amen, praise God, to reveal some things, praise God, amen. Some people are in bondage because they're holding on to some secret things that happened to them in their past or in their childhood, amen, praise God. And so many times they keep it on the inside, and when you come in contact with them, you try to figure out how you can deal with people, but sometimes we don't spend enough time with nobody to learn their history of their background, to see the reason why they act the way they act. Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to confide in people, amen, that's not going to prejudge you or put you down for whatever you have experienced in your life, amen. So we look at the scripture, amen, what's a keeping secrets of one type is always wrong, trying to hide sin. Oh, look at that. Trying to hide sin. What the scripture says, I believe uh, Proverbs 28 and 13, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Huh? Well, that's what it's saying. When you're trying to hide, you can't hide from God. No, you can't hide from God, and sometimes you're not even hiding things from people. Amen. But he who conceals his sin does not prosper. Mm -hmm. You won't prosper. But whoso confesses and renounce them, find mercy. Yes, that's what the scripture said. Amen. So one thing, we can't keep no secret from God. We can't hide from God. I was reading earlier today about Adam and Eve, and we know the story about Adam and Eve, about the, 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 the tree that was in the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you know, and, and uh, they partaken of the fruit and they disobeyed God. And we know that Adam had a relationship with God. But this particular day, the Bible says the voice of the Lord walked in the garden in the cool of the day. Amen. And Adam and Eve, they hid themselves. They, amen. The Bible said, I believe in the second chapter, praise God, amen, when God, amen, took the rib from Adam and created the woman Eve, amen, the Bible said they was, they was naked, amen, the, the man and the woman, yeah, I will say the man and his wife, amen, <laughs> amen, he wasn't no sugar daddy and she wasn't no sugar mama, but amen, that was his wife and he was a husband and the Bible said they both was naked, and it was not a shame. But as soon as sin came in, because of the disobedience, they tried to hide from God. Amen. And God called out to Adam, Adam, where are you? Where art thou? And he said he was hiding and he he hid himself. And he he made, they made uh they took some some fig leaves and made uh sold a, a apron to cover their nakedness. And the Lord said, how do you know you're naked? The Lord knew something was up. He knew something was up. Amen. Praise God. Their eyes was open. Amen. Their eyes was open. But, amen, they, uh, they had judgment to come down upon them. They suffered the consequences of their uh, disobedience. And so when it comes to our sin, God wants full disclosure. Huh? Now, we got to come before, we got to come clean before the Lord, you know. Hey, when we come clean, we got to come naked before the Lord. We, I mean, he, he sees everything, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, but holding the evil and the good. And so we can't hide nothing from God. We got to just come as we are, to call the Bible says, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I said the other day, amen, a whole lot of folks got a whole lot of skeletons in their closet. We all have had skeletons in our closet. I see if you open up the closet, a bunch of bones will fall out. And sometime on them bones, it might be still some meat on them bones. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Too long ago. And so we all need uh, uh, to, to cry out to God. If we sin, repent of our sin. But Isaiah 1 and 18 said, Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet. They shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So once again, we got to come clean. Uh -huh. We got to come correct before the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Got to come correct before the Lord. We just can't be half-stepping. We got to come correct before the Lord. Why? Because he's all, he already know. Amen. Amen. He will forgive us if we repent. If we repent. Uh-huh. Of course, there, there's no use, use uh, trying to hide our sin from God. Keeping secrets from him is impossible. Mm-hmm. Keeping secrets from God is impossible. Why? Because he is the God of gods and a revealer of secrets. I believe that's in the book of Daniel. Daniel 2 and 47 said, The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God, he's talking about Daniel God, the God Almighty, is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Uh-huh. He is a revealer of secrets. And so it says right here, even our secret sins are exposed in his light. Mm -hmm. Our secret sins are exposed. I believe uh, Psalms 90 and 8, it said, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Mm-hmm. Amen. You ever heard the saying, what's done in the dark will come to the light? Hmm? Amen. Yes, it will. What you do in the dark, it'll come to the light. Amen. Praise God. I believe the scripture tells us that men love darkness rather than light. Amen. In the scripture that we were talking about yesterday, amen, I believe the scripture tells us John uh, 3, 17, say, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Mm-hmm. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world. Jesus is the light of the world, and men love what? Darkness. Men love darkness rather than light. They love sin rather than the truth. You got people today, they want to hear a lie, then to hear the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. Why? Because the truth will make you free. Now, it doesn't say set you free, but the, the truth will make you free. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. And so he said, what well, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We, that's what I say. What does the Bible say about secrets? Lord, have mercy. Those who are married, you got a wife, and you know she's a woman. She ain't no transgender. She ain't had no surgery to take away the plumbing down there. Praise God. Amen. You saw her birth certificate. Amen. Praise God. God. These days, you don't know what people are getting. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Keeping secrets. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You want a heterosexual man. You want a heterosexual woman, huh? Amen. But some people want to live a double life. I know some folks don't like this type of preaching, but it is what it is. I'm going to tell the truth. Some people live a double life because they want their cake and eat it too, like the world say. Well, you know what? I'm going to marry a heterosexual woman, but I'm a, I'm a bisexual. <laughs> I'm a this. I, I swing both ways. And so I keep that on the down low. They keep it on the down low. They, they don't, amen, praise God. They keep it on the down low, keep it a secret. And so many times, amen, praise God, you dibbing and dabbing because we said earlier, amen, what's done in the dark will come to the light eventually. Eventually, it will come to the light. What you talking about, preacher? Because we said, you know, what does the Bible say about secrets? What does the Bible say about secrets? Amen. I believe Luke 8 and 17. Luke 8 and 17 say, for nothing, for nothing is secret that shall not be revealed, be made what manifest or be made be revealed, neither anything hid. That shall not be known and come abroad. What you saying? For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known or come to the light. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
It will eventually come to the light. What you doing? Amen. Keep it secret. One thing about it, we can't keep it from God, no matter how hard you try. We say you can't be God given, no matter how hard you try, but you can't. You can't hide nothing from God, no matter how hard you try. Amen. In, in, in society today, that's what I don't understand. And I always talk about relationships because that's what you see sometimes. When I go, get, go to the pharmacy, I go to my doctor's appointment, I hear people talking and things. And people like, you know, well, you know, we was on a break. Amen. We was on a break. Yeah. And in and, 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 and that breaking, y'all supposed to be still together. I never understood, amen, when married people, they went to, we separated or we, we you know, we, we, we just, you know, we still married. We, we trying to work it out. But how you going to work it out fooling around with somebody else? <laughs> how you going to work that thing out, amen, when you trying to, you know, you, 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 you done in, you're engaging in another relationship, but when you come back together, amen, you may have been impregnated by somebody. <laughs> you want to keep that secret. Oh, Lord have mercy. But what you do in the dark will come to the light. Yes, it will. It will come to the light. God himself, listen to him, God himself keeps secrets. Mm -hmm. There are some things, uh, possibly uh, many things, Hidden from us. And what you talking about, preacher? Well, I looked at Deuteronomy 29, 29. It said, the secret things belong unto the Lord, our God. The secret things belong unto the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us. Hmm? And to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. So once again, amen. He said the secret things belong unto us. I don't care how much we study the Bible. We can study from, from Genesis to the Revelation. We're not going to know everything about God. Hmm? But as we become born again, praise God, and we accept, amen, the Holy Ghost. Some people say the Holy Spirit. I was read on the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost gives you insight. The Holy Ghost brings all things to your remembrance. Amen. That's the reason why the, the, the church world is in the bad shape today, because you have some ministers don't have the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost, and their, their interpretation of the Word of God is through a carnalistic mind. They do not have anointing. <laughs> Oh, bless the Lord. Don't have no anointing. Do not have discernment because when you have the Holy Ghost, you have the spirit of discernment. And once again, I said, if you don't understand the word of God, some folks say, well, I don't read the King James. I don't hardly understand it. But when you start going to the new King James, start going to the, it start taking away from the original text. Hmm? So we have to pray to God, ask God to give us an understanding. If any man lack wisdom, like I said in the book of James, let him ask the God. Mm -hmm. We have to pray to God. So therefore, amen, God will give us an understanding. Jesus asked several people. When we talk about Jesus, Jesus asked several people, uh, several people uh, uh, to keep miracles he had done secret. Somebody said, whoo, mm, what you talking about, preacher? For example, Jesus healed two blind men. Amen. And told them, see that no one knows about this. Mm -hmm. I believe it said Matthew 9 and 30. And their eyes were open and Jesus straightly charged them saying, see that no man know it. Mm -hmm. Boy, I tell you what, that would have been hard to conceal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hard to conceal. But folks who knew that they was blind and they could see, they knew something had happened. Mm -hmm. Amen. They knew something had happened. Amen. It was Jesus. Amen. And that's hard to keep a secret. Amen. I tell you, when you get born again, when you become born again, you don't want. Amen. You, you don't. You want. You don't want to keep uh, 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 God Jesus secret. You, amen. Praise God. I don't know. You know, some people, like I say, get in relationships, and Amen. They want to keep uh, that man a secret, or they want to keep. That, that woman a secret, but when you get Jesus, you don't want to keep Jesus a secret. 
You want to uh, you want to uh, sing his praises. You want other folks to come in contact, amen, with him, amen. I, I say that because sometimes, amen, back in the day, pray God, some people or some men, they, they had a day woman, then they had a night woman. So what I'm saying is the one, you know, at night, he was just with her at night, but the one in the daytime, he was with in the daytime. And so the one at night, I always wonder why you don't want to be there. If I was in that shape, if I was in that situation, if you couldn't be with me in the daytime, when you couldn't be with me at night. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we shouldn't be trying to hide Jesus. Amen. We shouldn't be trying to hide Jesus and keep Jesus a secret. Let folks know you love Jesus because mm -hmm. he love us. Let, oh, amen. Let folks know that you, you serve Jesus. You, you worship Jesus. You adore Jesus. Don't keep him a secret. Mm -hmm. Some folks don't know if you save. Amen. Some folks in the workplace don't even know that you are born again Christian because you try to conceal Jesus. <laughs> Amen. You you try to conceal Jesus. Don't want folks to know that you are born again. Don't know want folks to let you know know that you uh, you know uh, that you're a child of God. Amen. And Jesus said, I'm gonna wrap this up. Jesus said, if you be ashamed on me before men and women, I'll be ashamed on you before my father. He's not ashamed of you, so why should you be ashamed of him? <laughs> amen. When Job realized, amen, praise God, when Job realized the, uh, the knowledge, the, amen, uh, the, 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 the knowledge that God had, he spoke of the things too wonderful for me to know. This is what Job said. Job, I think, 42 and 3 said, Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore, have I uttered that I understood not. Mm -hmm. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. This is what Job said. This is what Job said. So as we wrap this up, we can conclude that God does not consider keeping secrets to be sinful in of itself. Mm-hmm. There are some things mm -hmm, that people should know and some things they should not. <laughs> some people say, boy, I'm going to take this to my grave. You know, don't nobody know this but me and God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. God's concern is how secrets are used. Now we say, what does the Bible say about secrets? Whether to protect others or to harm them. Mm -hmm. And so that what we were talking about tonight. Amen. Praise God. What does the Bible say about secrets? Amen. Think about that. What does the Bible say? You may come up with some scriptures. Amen. More than what we read. Praise God. Just something to think about. Amen. Praise God. But everything. Praise God. Like I said, we can't hide nothing from the Lord and we most times can't hide stuff from people. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we just have to come clean before the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come clean. Amen. And when we do, God will forgive us of our sin. Amen. I talk about Adam. When Adam, you know, Adam, who told you, nigga, he want to, well, it's the woman that you gave, and then the woman blamed the serpent. Amen. If Adam would have came clean. Amen. Because we can't hide anything from the Lord. Amen. We can't hide anything from God. And so we just thank God for this opportunity, amen, to be before you this evening at the Real Time Gospel Hour with Pastor Henderson. And we're just so grateful for those who tune in, amen, just to teach the Word of God, amen. I like to go through the Bible, amen, get book, chapter, and verse, amen, that you can read it yourself. And like I say, oftentimes have topics you may, amen, in your study time, amen, your study time, you may find some more scriptures, amen, that you can run reference to, to the topic of the lesson. Amen. What does the Bible say about secrets? So once again, we thank God for the opportunity. We thank God for those who tune in and support. Amen. The Real Time Gospel Hour. We thank God for this opportunity. Amen. To bring forth the word of God. And if it's the Lord's will, amen. Praise God. We pray that you have a blessed uh, remaining evening. And we hope you have a blessed uh, remaining week. And if it's the Lord's will, we shall see you amen on thursday night if it's the lord's will on thursday night 
Continue to keep us in your prayers. Amen. You pray for us. We will pray for you. Amen. You pray for me. We, I pray for you. Everybody be prayed for. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank God. You have a blessed evening. In Jesus' name, amen.